Okay, I'd like to thank the organizers, Professors Ngin, you, and Pavesio for the uh, opportunity to uh, present at this prestigious meeting. And these are the uh, sample board questions that Kwan made us uh, make early this morning. So among active SLE patients, what is the frequency of retinal involvement? And the second question is, what are the different treatment modalities for lupus retinopathy and choroidopathy? So hopefully in the next presentation, you'll uh, pick up the answers. Uh, SLE is a chronic autoimmune connective tissue disorder that affects uh, multiple organ systems. And it's characterized by multiple immunologic abnormalities, especially the production of anti-nuclear antibodies or autoantibodies. Uh, it's characterized also by variable clinical course with remissions uh, and chronic or acute relapses. Um, the uh, prevalence is about 100 per 100,000 population, and this does affect uh, a young patients with a ratio of nine females to one male. It's associated with some uh, MHC genes. And I think uh, you probably know uh, a lot of famous people who um, have been diagnosed with lupus and admitted they had lupus. Here's one who had a, re a kidney transplant recently. Here's another one, and here's one that everybody knows. Uh, and in the Philippines, the most famous uh, lupus patient was uh, Ferdinand Marcos, the former dictator. And one of the good things that came out of it was when he found out that lupus could damage his heart, his lungs, and his kidneys, he built these uh, big hospitals to treat the heart, <laughs> the lungs, and the kidneys. And here's someone from uh, Kwan's uh, generation who you might know. This is the Martian. Maybe this is the first case of uh, interplanetary disease. So um, uh, we don't fully understand the mechanisms behind uh, uh, lupus, but it's a combination of uh, genetic predisposition interacting with the environment, and this causes a uh, production of uh, autoantibodies. And these antibodies uh, uh, form immune complexes which are deposited in end organs such as the eye uh, and the kidneys. And once these uh, immune complexes are deposited, there's inflammatory response and eventually end organ damage. Uh, as medical students, we all had to memorize the American College of Rheumatology diagnostic criteria, and some of these manifestations were fairly mild, but some of them are very, were life-threatening. Uh, for um, decades, the ACR diagnostic criteria was what internists used uh, to establish that somebody had uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. And about five years ago, the uh, Systemic Lupus International Collaborating Clinics, or SLIC, came out with the diagnostic criteria, which added uh, some more criteria. And uh, some uh, publications uh, have demonstrated that using the uh, uh, SLIC diagnostic criteria uh, actually uh, increases the sensitivity of diagnosing someone with systemic lupus erythematosus. And important uh, in this diagnostic criteria is to establish uh, the presence of different uh, antibodies. Um, Almost every part of the eye can be involved in lupus, uh, starting from the skin, uh, the periorbital areas. Uh, keratoconjunctivitis sicca or dry eye is a very important feature uh, of uh, SLE, and this can also lead to corneal uh, damage as well as episcleritis and scleritis. Uh, for the purposes of this talk, we'll be focus focusing on lupus retinopathy and choroidopathy. Um, so lupus retinopathy is one of the most common sight threatening complications of lupus, and maybe about one in four active SLE patients uh, would develop uh, some form of retinopathy, whether mild or severe. Uh, it's also important to know that uh, uh, lupus retinopathy is uh, uh, highly associated with uh, production of anti-cardiolipin uh, and lupus anticoagulants. And if you have retinopathy, uh, uh, three quarters of patients would exhibit these antibodies, whereas if there's no retinopathy, uh, fewer patients would exhibit these autoantibodies. We can also consider retinopathy as a marker of disease activity. And as uh, we treat the uh, uh, systemic lupus eryth erythematosus and it improves, you can also see uh, improvement of the appearance of the retina. Uh, in lupus retinopathy, we can find typical features of microangiopathy, such as hemorrhages, cotton wool spots, and hard exudates, uh, which are signs of vasculitis. And as you said, this is associated with anti-cardiolipin antibodies. It's also associated with central nervous system lupus. So if you have uh, eye involvement, uh, 
of the retina and choroid, uh, there's a high chance their patients might have CNS lupus as well. And it's also uh, associated with elevation of serum creatinine. Um, a typical diagnostic test we do for patients with we suspect to have lupus retinopathy would be fluorescein angiography. And here you can see a, a vasculitis. You can see leakage from the retinal blood vessels. You can see occlusion uh, of the uh, arteries and veins uh, leading to hyperperfusion of the retina. And uh, if this uh, um, was of a severe intensity, then you can see neovascularization due to uh, the ischemia. Uh, the introduction of ultra-wide field uh, fluorescein angiography has allowed clinicians to uh, better visualize the fundus, and we can full, more fully appreciate the extent of the pathology caused by uh, lupus retinopathy. We're able to identify uh, the presence of peripheral disease activity and neovascularization better, uh, and this may guide uh, treatment dosing as well as treatment duration. Though we still have to see uh, studies that demonstrate that using uh, ultra-wide field angiography will uh, lead to better outcomes and establish uh, endpoints. There are some side threatening complications of lupus retinopathy, including uh, macular ischemia and neovascularization. And with enough neovascularization, you can get vitreous hemorrhage as well as neovascular glaucoma. Uh, lupus can also cause uh, macular atrophy from uh, the ischemic process. Uh, there's also been uh, case reports of cystoid macular edema when there's active inflammation. Uh, and this responds well to uh, intravitreal steroid therapy. Uh, and eventually, uh, if the disease is advanced or prolonged, you can have scarring of the retina causing permanent visual damage. So let's now turn our attention to uh, lupus choroidopathy. Let's, let's go deeper. So lupus choroidopathy, fortunately, is a more rare uh, complication of uh, lupus, but it's also uh, devastating in terms of visual outcomes. Uh, and uh, this, uh, these OCT scans uh, are very helpful in identifying uh, lupus choroidopathy because they clearly show uh, the presence of multiple uh, multifocal serous detachments uh, as well as uh, RPE detachments, and this is believed to be due to transduction of fluid through the Brooks membrane from the choroid. Uh, ICG, uh, indocyanine green angiography, is a very useful uh, imaging modality for uh, diagnosing lupus choroidopathy. Uh, you can see several changes such as uh, uh, early uh, hypofluorescent areas and uh, later on, you can see fuzziness of the choroidal vessels as well as uh, zonal uh, choroidal hyperfluorescence. Uh, and you can also see uh, poorly defined areas of choroidal hyperfluorescence in the late phases. And you can sometimes see clusters or, of pinpoint choroidal hyperfluorescence. Uh, OCT is, uh, as I mentioned, a very useful tool for diagnosing, but also a very useful tool for monitoring the response of uh, lupus choroidopathy to treatment and as uh, patients get treated, you can see reduction of the um, sensory uh, fluid, uh, the sensory neural fluid, and the PEDs. Uh, and it should be very interesting to see uh, uh, the results of using uh, enhanced depth imaging or sub source imaging uh, to see if this will be applicable for uh, treating patients with lupus choroidopathy. Uh, medical treatment is uh, very important. Uh, to treat lupus retinopathy, and not just for the eyes, but also for the uh, systemic disease because uh, SLE is associated with increased uh, morbidity and mortality. And if we can uh, treat these patients uh, early on, uh, we'll be able to uh, save some of these patients' vision, but also save some patients' lives. Uh, the uh, medical treatment for lupus has been very well established, not just in ophthalmic literature, but especially so in medical literature, and early on, we like to treat patients aggressively with a high-dose corticosteroids, sometimes given intravenously, and for severe ocular disease, uh, given uh, intravitreally. And as the disease gets controlled, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, internists, such as the rheumatologists, they like to put the patients on hydroxychloroquine treatment. Uh, the use of immunosuppressives uh, can be added on to steroids or used as a steroid-sparing regimen, and the biologic agents such as rituximab have also been shown to um, be useful for treating uh, the posterior segment lesions of lupus. Uh, there's also a role for laser and surgery. If you have neovascularization and you have early uh, vitreous hemorrhage, it might be useful to do panretinal photocoagulation uh, to arrest this disease process. And for uh, lupus choroidopathy, 
Uh, if they don't uh, completely respond to a medical treatment, then there have been uh, case reports of using photodynamic therapy in combination with focal laser to resolve uh, subretinal fluid. And lastly, if there's extensive vitreous hemorrhage, a parse plane of vitrectomy may be used to uh, improve the patient's visual outcome or to reattach uh, long-standing uh, uh, retinal detachment. Uh, we should also uh, mention that uh, uh, it's important that uh, uh, we also monitor patients who are already uh, responsive to treatment. This is one case where sometimes the uh, uh, treatment may be just as bad as the disease ocular-wise. So patients who, are, who have been on prolonged hydroxychloroquine therapy or have received a large dose or have uh, malfunction of their liver or kidney uh, can be prone to uh, the bull's eye maculopathy from uh, placoneal treatment. So uh, we frequently see these patients referred to us for monitoring. Uh, and uh, we can use visual fields uh, and multifocal ERGs to monitor patients for uh, drug toxicity. Uh, the visual prognosis for uh, SLE uh, generally uh, responds on how, uh, depends on how early you can uh, treat the patient. If you can treat the patient early enough, you can uh, limit the amount of uh, foveal ischemia uh, that develops uh, and prevent uh, complications. So the key messages we have here is uh, lupus can uh, affect uh, the entire body, but also different parts of the eye. Uh, you can uh, lose uh, a lot of vision from retinopathy and choroidopathy, but early and aggressive treatment with corticosteroids and other immunosuppressive medicines can limit damage, preserve visual function, and also save the patient's lives. Uh, before ending, we'd like to invite everyone to come to uh, the Philippines in February for the controversies in ophthalmology meeting. Um, and then we go to the questions. So among the active SOE patients, what's the frequency of retinal involvement? C, very good answer. C, Kwan, I'm uh, doing as well as you. Exactly. I see, yeah. <laughs> and what are the treatment modalities for lupus, retinopathy, and choroidopathy? E, all of the above. Okay, that's great. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.